Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for Wednesday, February 23rd, 2022. Well, my goodness sakes, we have um, a pretty ugly chart here that we're looking at, but we are getting a little bit of relief here this morning, at least in the pre-market futures. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Wednesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thanks so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Well, yesterday we had some pretty ugly selling with that uncertainty of Russia invading the Ukraine. And we know that, um, well, if you watched Putin's speech at all or uh, read any of the transcript, um, he is certainly um, looking for a, uh, well, it would appear he's looking for a re regime change. It doesn't look like he's going to be willing to back off um, at all, um, at least at this point. And um, in fact, he kind of came off as just a little bit on the crazy side, um, um, essentially coming out and saying he thinks Russia really messed up with the Cold War and and uh, the fall of the Soviet Union, and oh my goodness, he's pushing hard here for some substantial change. Well, let's take a look at these charts and see if we can gain some information about how we may want to approach the market for today. Taking a look here at the market itself, as you guys know, we're, we're con we continue in this pretty substantial uh, downtrend here. Now, what that has created is a bit of an oversold condition in the short term. Now, if we take a look at some of these um, um, support and resistance areas in the chart, if I were to bring a line in here, we caught a little price support in here. Notice we did make a new low. So officially, we have a lower high and a lower low on the chart. Now, what that means is, is we want to be looking on any relief rally, we want to be looking for those resistance resistance levels above um, that could stop us where those bears might come into play and unfortunately we have a fairly significant one right here in the Dow now if we can push through that little area right there and, and, and I shouldn't say little area that's a pretty substantial um, area in price action if we can push up through that then we're going to be challenged by this area right in here on the chart and then of course any any push up beyond that we just run into more and more resistance levels um, in the chart if we take a look at our technicals obviously here our technicals are not in a good condition we do appear to be oversold in the short term but it may be difficult for those bulls to stage a whole lot of rally um, just simply because of the uncertainty that really surrounds this market with um, oil prices surging to the upside, with inflation plaguing us right now, it's impacting those consumers. We're seeing that in some of those internal numbers. And we're also seeing that um, this could maybe change what the Fed does. And so we have that uncertainty out there um, with what could come next from the Federal Reserve. And then of course, no matter what occurs today, it really is only one news report away where we could have a big intraday whipsaw that could be up or down or a substantial overnight reversal um, depending on how this conflict um, expands or spreads out over there. So pretty tough situation here. Now what that would mean to me is that the day traders will really kind of have the upper hand because holding on to a swing trade and even holding overnight may be difficult with these uncertainties out there in the market. So I would want to suggest to everyone it may be wise if you do trade and you find a position in there that you really like then make sure you're taking some of those profits quicker than normal because the next morning, um, the next hour, that news report comes out and everything changes and you should be prepared for that potential. Let's take a look at the SPY. Now SPY, very similar situation. 
short term oversold uh, push down here into price support in the chart obviously pretty doggone bearish chart obviously continuing in this downtrend um, and um, we've got a lot of work here to repair some of this so we're trying to hold some of this price support in here but what that means is that we have lots of resistance above and if I bring a line in here you can see we may have just a little bit of a challenge um, right in this area we're trying to gap up over that this morning but we'll watch that closely um, remember we've seen a lot of morning gap ups where um, it just met with sellers so um, be prepared for that possibility and if we can push on through there I want you to notice this level right in here this is a fairly substantial price resistance level in the chart and could um, present some challenges and that's where we might find some of those bears lined up ready to go back to work um, if we can get through that maybe just a tiny little bit higher in that chart and you can see that resistance right through here in that chart that could create that um, well it's this that just that place where the bears could dig in and um, really defend um, their resistance levels in the chart so watch that closely now of course our technicals here are also pretty ugly but not quite as bad as the Dow notice that the 34 EMA hasn't quite made it down through that 200 day but that 50-day moving average is declining pretty sharply. So we got a lot of work here to start correcting, correcting some of these technicals. Let's take a look at the Qs. Now, the QQQ, unfortunately, is a pretty dismal chart in the fact that we broke down, we made those new lows here in that chart. And as we push back up, guys, we're going to want to be watching pretty carefully some of these resistance levels in the chart. We're trying to push up through here this morning in the pre-market, whether or not that will actually hold and whether or not we could get some selling right after the open I can't tell you but watch that closely and if we can push through that then we're going to see levels up in here possibly a little tiny level right here and then a fairly substantial price resistance level right in here and that would um, kind of come right along and correspond with the downtrend so any rally up into here um, you're going to want to be watching pretty cl closely for that potential of reversal and our technicals here are pretty close to horrible um, notice that our uh, 34 EMA crossing down through the 200 it's probably only going to be a few more days before our 50 day moving average crosses down through that 200 day moving average in the QQQ and we have established a massive area of technical and price action resistance right through there so watch that close now our IWM IWM is also in a very bearish condition but we didn't make that new low here in um, IWM which is kind of interesting and although we had the, a bit of this bear flag in here and this downtrend in place um, IWM held up better than um, honestly I would um, I was expecting um, although I've made some nice money here on this sell-off in the market um, I took a I took 90% gains on a spy credit spread um, yesterday um, a, a large size spread and um, I took um, uh, over 50% um, return on an IWM position so and that's following up on Friday closing trades where I had a QQQ short position that paid off nicely as well so this has been a really good month for me but um, I'm still a little bit surprised at IWM holding this strong now if we can find these price supports in here and bounce back up just kind of keep in mind guys we've got lots of price resistance in the chart and if we can happen to break through there then we're going to run into a year's worth of price resistance in that chart and our technicals here overall all are awful our 50-day moving average is dropping down below that big price resistance level in the chart just adding to that significant level in here of price resistance for the Russell so we've got a lot of work here for recovery in the Russell let's take a look at our VIX now our VIX did a pretty good job yesterday it was really interesting that although we um, sold off pretty strongly that afternoon rally after the um, 
Biden's speech, he, he created quite a little bit of volatility with that speech in the price action, but we rallied back up and that pushed that uh, back down here just a little bit. So we hit that high up here around 30 handles, but we ended up closing just about 29 handles on the day. And as you can see, we're still holding that uptrend here in the chart. We did react negatively to that price resistance right there, which I think is good, but we are still holding some price support here in the chart as well. So with the bullishness that we're seeing in the market, in the pre-market this morning, we might finally get this to relax a little bit, but I don't think we are anywhere close to sounding the all clear here. As a matter of fact, we'll want to watch this if it pulls back. If we can find, if, if it finds some support or holds onto that trend, uh, that could be the problem for us here. So watch that carefully. Let's take a look at our uh, T2122. Our T2122, pretty interesting in T2122, even with that ugly selling, we didn't quite make it down here into the full uh, bullish reversal zone. So we still have that potential, guys, as, as ugly as it is here in the market, we still have that potential, according to T2122, that we could drop further. So watch for that possibility. If we got a whipsaw today or a retest of market lows, that might push us down into this area and we'd have that opportunity then to maybe catch a little bit of a relief rally. Now if the bulls can find something to grab onto today and unfortunately we've got a big round of earnings reports but really not much on the economic calendar to really inspire the market but if they can find reason to be bullish if we can get those bulls to engage here and that may be again tough with all of the uncertainty out there with Russia Ukraine we've certainly opened up up a big upside opportunity here um, in that chart for some relief. So hopefully some sweet relief is on the way, but we still run that risk that we could dip just a little bit lower yet. Let's take a look at our T2108. And I'm still giving this one kind of up to those bulls. Although we saw that pullback yesterday, only 25% of our stocks by the end of the day holding above their 40 day moving average. I want you to notice that we didn't take out these lows. So even though we pushed back down into this low area of the market, we didn't take out these lows. So that's a little bit on the bullish side here. Uh, um, overall trying to hold on to that support but let's keep in mind we've got a lot of resistance in the chart and the downtrend there's still a lot of work here before we correct that and um, our t2107 very much the same although we ended up by the end of the day 28 percent of our stocks holding up above the 200 day moving average we broke down through that little support but not enough to really be too terribly worrisome and if we bounce up today that should help quite a bit it. But let's keep in mind, we still have lots and lots of resistance in this in this chart um, that we need to punch through. And um, the downtrend continues to remain pretty darn strong here in uh, that T2107. T2101 continues to be just a little bit on the perplexing side. Um, with all of that price movement, we're not getting much change here in T2101, that absolute breadth index. And I think it's been just because, um, you know, there's just been a lot of folks throw up their hands and say, look, I'm setting out. I'm not doing anything. We're not gaining um, big momentum here. But I do think this is setting up for a big move one way or the other. I can't tell you if it's going to be up or down, but I think we're setting up for a pretty big move in our absolute breadth. So I don't know where or when that might occur. So watch that close. Let's take a look at our um, um, economic calendar for today. And um, fortunately, we have a little bit of a break um, on our economic calendar. And if you'll take a look here, we've got a light, light day with uh, mortgage applications here this morning. We'll want to pay attention to those mortgage applications and you can see they have come in. They have been a little bit weak here. We've been running in the negatives here on that. And oh my goodness, we just had a big, um, a big move negative um, on those mortgage applications. So this is going to that whole problem uh, where we see housing prices continue to move up and the consumer 
we're being pinched here. So a big, big decline in mortgage apps, and that could be showing us that little bit of concern about the consumer. Now for the rest of the day, we've got a Fed speaker out here. Red Book's probably not gonna move us around it at all. We've got some bond auctions that, you know, bonds right now, a little bit sensitive, so we might wanna watch that. But other than that, not much there. But one thing I want to remind you of is we could see the market, even after a little bit of pop-up this morning or whatever um, occurs, we could see the market stall and fizzle just a little bit. And that's because tomorrow we have a GDP number that we'll want to be paying attention to. And then we follow that up with jobless claims, new home sales, and petroleum status. So we're going to have a pretty big day of data tomorrow, and it wouldn't be un... Uh, it wouldn't be a, su a surprise if the market just kind of stalls and becomes choppy as we wait for those. And then keep in mind, um, we don't get a break here on Friday with durable goods, personal incomes and outlays, consumer sentiment, and pending home sales. Um, we've got a lot of data coming our way over the uh, toward the end of the week here. So be prepared for that and that additional volatility that it may create. Let's take a look at our earnings calendar. Now, our earnings calendar is is busy today. We've got um, over 250 companies on the calendar today, but unfortunately, guys, we don't have, we're really running into that place in the market where we don't have those um, giant notables to really move us a lot. But let's take a look at a few of these and um, just know that um, although they, these will move us around a little bit and we should be very sensitive to these earnings reports, that they may not be enough to really inspire the market a lot today. Let's take a look at Lowe's. Now Lowe's um, reported well today and it's gapped down and trying to move back up here into its downtrend, but let's keep in mind, we're pushing up into this downtrend in that chart and price resistance. So Lowe's, one of the more notables of the morning to be paying attention to. Um, we've got uh, BKNG um, that um, we'll be reporting today. We're going to hear from eBay this afternoon. That'll be interesting um, after the bell today. Um, DOC, little real estate trust in there. We've got Ingersoll that we'll be reporting today. Um, we've got some fast food here with Jack in the Box reporting. Um, um, OLED. OLED will be reporting today. And um, we're going to hear from TAP, TAP, and RGR. So a few of those stocks that, you know, um, are always very important to pay attention to, particularly if you hold them, but certainly not the kind of stocks that are going to ultimately change direction here in the market. So let's just uh, be really watchful of those stocks and, and be kind of careful. Let's keep in mind that um, we also have another big day of earnings tomorrow. So um, still that more of a charge of volatility in the price action could certainly occur. And we've hit, we've seen so many hit and miss results from these earnings. Um, it's making it, as I've mentioned before, um, before we started this round of earnings, guys, it was I said it was going to be important to see if these companies could produce enough results to support the high prices, the high valuations that we've seen here in the market. And um, clearly what we're seeing right now is we're struggling with that. So watch carefully. Then let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, guys, if you can do me that quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find this video to be worthy, please click those thumbs up buttons, leave a brief comment, and please feel free to share this video out on your social media feed. And I would thank everyone so much for doing that. And once again, thank you so much to everyone who's been supporting the channel through the Buy Me A Coffee link. Um, and watch carefully, guys. We'll probably be doing some kind of a test out here of, some, of, a, live, of a live YouTube thing here very, very soon. Um, 
So watch carefully for that. Um, let's take a look at a few of these stocks that could be setting up. And please keep in mind, guys, that these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. As a matter of fact, um, in this market, as challenging as it is, it may be wise if you're not an experienced trader to just just sit on your hands and protect that capital. Remember, one of the very important jobs of a trader is to make sure you protect and maintain that capital. Live to fight another day if you're not feeling like you have any kind of an edge at all. That being said, there are some stocks out there that I think are worth keeping an eye on and I'm watching closely. Take a look at this stock in Zillow. Now Zillow has had some pretty ugly times here recently, pushing down pretty strongly as you can see, but they seem to have resolved a lot of those issues according to their last earnings report. Now this is not ready for prime time yet, but it is a pattern that I like to watch. This is that rounded bottom breakout pattern, guys. And although this is, this shot up really sharply and pulled back pretty hard, it's still setting up in a pretty decent pattern. Now I wouldn't rule out the possibility that we'd have to rest or consolidate in here for a little bit, but watch for that next opportunity maybe to come around in Zillow. I think it's worth paying attention to. You might also, in that same area, might want to take a look at a little stock here by um, Silver Miner. Silver um, been working its way up here a little bit. Another rounded bottom breakout here, and I'm seeing this. This is coming up in quite a few of those silver miners where we've broken back through that 50. We pulled back here recently. We're trying to hold that higher low in here. So keep an eye on stocks like Mag, AG, um, any of those miners out there, some of the junior miners are looking just pretty darn good. Take a look at BMY. Now, Bristol Myers has had a pretty good um, run to the upside, as you can see, and we're up here testing some resistance in the chart. But if you notice right in here on this chart, I really like this nice little consolidating move in here. And we're sliding out here toward that trend. So watch that closely. If that can find some buyers in here, here it does have that possibility that we could pop on through and start breaking through some resistance here now one of the things that might help that is just this little bit of relief rally that may be coming our way so keep an eye on uh, Bristol Myers you might also want to keep an eye on some of these defensive sector stocks um, coca-cola pushing back up here as you can see and pushing on through that resistance. And if I pull this back, that's a pretty substantial breakout here in Coca-Cola. A good dividend payer starting to perk up here and look good, nice little rest here for two or three days. Really didn't get involved in the selling yesterday. So keep an eye on this. If that bullishness does come into the market, then we could start perking up here on um, Coca-Cola. I'm also gonna put Altria in that mix. Take a look at all tree here pushing up through this resistance in the chart. And this is a big downtrend. As a matter of fact, guys, I may be considering to pick this up as a longer term hold. It would be a stock position where I would buy this up and I'll be selling covered calls against it, but a longer term hold. And I've done this many times with Altria before. And here we are nearly a 7% dividend yield. Um, could be an opportunity on that defensive sector stock for that long longer term position. I'll be watching it closely here for a potential entry. Um, but just because I'm considering that doesn't mean it is suitable for you. So make sure you follow your own trading rules. Let's take a look at um, Archer Daniels. Archer, Archer Daniels looking really, really good here. And we know food and energy continue to be a, an, an issue for our inflation. And food, um, recent numbers coming out just showing that there's a high likelihood that um, all of our food prices continue to move higher because of the cost of fertilizer, the cost of inputs for these farmers out there. So watch this closely. Um, could be um, could be some more upside here in um, Archer Daniels. So that's a pretty um, interesting one to watch. And I think you might want to keep an eye here on U.S. Steel. U.S. Steel pushing some resistance in the chart here for sure and for certain and it may need a little bit more of a rest out here um, sideways 
But I do like this pattern where we pop into that resistance, pull back, and that pullback wasn't super strong. I'd look for a little bit of buying to show up in there, and if it can, we might actually pop through that resistance and push on higher. And I think I'm going to be remiss if I don't mention um, gold and silver again. Um, gold continues to remain very, very strong with this uncertainty that we're seeing in the market. Um, I think it's a little bit overbaked here for in the short term. It may need a little bit more rest or pullback for that next opportunity into that chart, but watch that closely. And I'm also going to put silver in that mix, although silver's got a little bit more work here to do to really recover um, nicely and, and get out of that downtrending area right there. Silver has perked up and and if we get a little resting pullback in here, it certainly could find that those buyers coming up here and maybe following up in a trend. So watch that close. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you great results in your trading. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for, so much for the support of this content. I really, really appreciate it. Take care. Have an awesome day. We'll see you right back here bright and early. Thursday morning. Wish you all the best.